you, you've forgotten completely what the real God is like. It just is a pure idea. And you're an idea in God's mind. You're as abstract as God is. The ego's like, oh, no, it can't be. You know, it, it doesn't, it can't, it, all that it does is just concepts and conceptualizing. It doesn't know what spirit is. It doesn't know what abstraction is. A body is a dangerous concept if left to you. You can try to make an identity in it, and you can actually try to live in it. Even though you really can't. You can't really even get into a body. Some people who have had out-of-body experiences are fascinated that they can look on their body and see their body from the corner of the room. They would tell me, it's the most strangest thing. I, I was watching my body from the corner of the room. And I said, yeah, isn't that great? And you didn't even have any eyeballs, did you? And they'd go, how could I see my body without eyeballs? I said, there were no eyeballs in the corner of the room, were they? You know, they're fascinated by that. You know. So what, they're like, what does that mean? And I said, well, it means that that perception doesn't rely on the body, that a perception is, is part of consciousness. That what you, sing, you think you see through the body's eyes and you think you hear through the body's ears, but it's all mind. The body has nothing to do with it at all. Even the image making, it's not the brain that's doing anything, it's not the eyeballs, it's not the ears and the eardrums. There's nothing going on because it's all mind and perception is an activity of, of wrong-mindedness, of, of consciousness. Jesus says consciousness arose after the separation. It's a, it's a faculty of consciousness. So that, that's what I tell people, that's what it means when you have an out-of-the-body experience. You, you still perceive the body but without eyeballs. And I said, could you hear anything? Oh yeah, I could hear every word in the room. But where were your ears? Were there a little set of ears up in the corner too, there too? No. Oh, so hearing must not be actually part of the ears, and seeing must not be part of the eyes, because you were seeing and hearing, and you had no eyeballs and ears. Oh my God, it's an activity of consciousness. That's just a, another leap in consciousness, just taking one more leap, leap you know, getting clearer and clearer about what's actually going on, or seems to be going on. And then you can let the whole thing go when you go higher. Yeah, you start to realize that communication is thought. So what we talk about, that telepathic communication is, is a closer approximation of real communication, because it's thought. And because it's all mind, and there, there doesn't have to be lips involved, it doesn't have to be jaw or movement of a mouth and teeth and all these things and the tongue, it's not, you can still communicate, the thoughts are still there but there's no body necessary and that's what happens when people go into the light in this near-death experience, they, they know everything, they describe complete communication, wordless communication, that's getting much closer towards actual communication, and then imagine heaven is just unified thought. So it's not just separate thoughts, like the Aborigines and Marla Morgan's book, you know, communicating telepathically, we need more guys, we need more hunters because we found a beast. And, you know, they just, they don't send pigeons and messages and they don't, have walkie-talkies or cell phones, they just telepathically, we need more warriors to, to take this beast, you know, and so on and so forth. But that's not highest, that's not communion, that's, that's telepathic communication. And then higher than that, it, it just gets up into communion, wordless experiences of knowing everything. You know, to the ego, that's like, what does that even mean? I knew everything. But that people remember that experience from the near-death experience, the light. In the light, I knew everything. There was nothing I did not know. And, and Jesus would say, that's identity. You've, you've remembered your identity. The only thing that you could ever remember is identity. Everything else that you tried to remember in form was not, cannot be remembered because it doesn't have a, an existence. It doesn't have a reality.